German short row shaping. How do you do it? It's very easy. I prefer it over the wrap and turn. This is a pretend armhole <laughs> and, uh, and I've got markers where uh, I have to knit through and do short row shaping. So in the case of my pretend example, my pattern says I'm just to knit through those stitch those two um, markers and when I hit this marker that's when I'm supposed to do my German short row shaping. So I'm also doing the seed stitch just to make it complicated to show you how you do it in pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is knit to the point where the German short row is to happen. I'll pick it up as soon as I get there. All right I've reached that point. So this is where the magic happens. I've reached the point where I'm supposed to start my German short row. So with that I slip that marker over and I work the next stitch in pattern. So that's a knit stitch and I'm doing seeds so that would be a purl. So I work it as normal. Then I turn the work. Okay, I turn the work. And uh, and then that stitch that you just worked becomes the German short row stitch. So you just work that one and now you have to make sure that your yarn is in the front. So regardless of whether this is a knit or a purl, it doesn't matter. Your yarn might be in the front, but if it's not, bring it to the front. Okay, it's in the front. Then I pass that slip stitch over and I pass it purl wise. See that? That's purl wise. This would be knit wise. This is purl wise. So I pass it purl wise over. Ta-da! Then, this is fun, you take your yarn, you bring it over to the back and then you give that all the strength you have and you pull it tight, 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 tight. And what you're doing is making a mess. <laughs> and that's the idea. You're trying to create two stitches out of one. Um, which, which actually what it does is it prevents the gap from happening if when you're doing short row shaping. So I've got that tight and I can see that I have two stitches really in the one. All right, now I just continue uh, to the point where you would next do the German short row, which in this weird fake example is this one. This marker tells me this is where I stop my short row shaping. So, okay, I will work up until this one and show you what happens on that side. I've reached that marker, so I pass it over and I work the next stitch as normal. So this is a purl, so now it would be a knit. Turn the work. Make sure the yard is in, yard, yard, yarn is in the front, which it is in this case. Pass that stitch over purl wise. Then have some fun. <laughs> Take that yarn over to the other side. Dum -de -dum -de -dum, like that. And then have fun pulling on it. Pull it tight. <laughs> and you are making really two stitches out of one, right? Okay, and then you simply work your way back in pattern. Uh, let's see, that's a knit, so this is a purl because this is seed stitch, right? So I will just work back. This isn't going to take long. I will work back till I get to that marker point. <laughs> How's the weather? <laughs> it's really nice here. Okay, so this was the very first one I had done. So I'm just gonna pass that over and look, that stitch is crazy. What did I do wrong? Well, that was that um, German short row stitch. So now what you do is you work it in pattern and you make sure to pick up both legs. So this is in pattern. So this was purl knit. So this one needs to be purled. So I just purl through. Make sure you grab both legs. Purl it through. There you go. You just work the German short row stitch. So um, then you pick up the next stitch. If that's what the pattern tells you to do. Sometimes it might p tell you to knit one, to knit to work the next stitch and turn or it might say work two and turn but let's pretend it's asking you to you work the German short row and then work one more stitch. So that's a purl so I have to knit it. Turn the work. I turn the work make sure the yarn is on the front. It is. Slip the stitch purl wise 
and have fun. Bring it over to the back and have some fun. Pull that tight. You never, you're not supposed to pull your work tight. <laughs> but I do this time because I want to make that double loop. Okay, and then you need to work in pattern. And I just check where I am. See, that's that's a pearl. That was a knit. That was a pearl. And that was a knit. So if I was um, in a seed stitch, this would have to be a pearl. So just just do whatever the pattern is. Okay, and then knit back to that other stitch, which I'll show you in a second. Just working back and forth. Okay, so I've reached that initial marker, slide it over, and there's that German short row stitch. You can tell because it's all funny, so you have to work it. Work it in pattern. In my case, this would now be a knit stitch, so I knit through both those legs. Got to catch both legs. Okay, and then work one more stitch. Unless the pattern tells you to work two more stitches. Work one more stitch, turn your work, make sure your yarn is in front which it is, whoops, it's in front, slip that stitch purlwise, then bring it over to the back and pull down, <laughs> make it tight so that you've created a funny stitch and continue to work back and forth. I'll pick it up after I've worked a few just to show you something else. Okay, so I'm at that German shirt row stitch. I have to work it in pattern and you have to always make sure you pick up both legs. So that would be a knit in this case. And perfect. And then I'm going to pretend now I'm at a point in the pattern where it says not just knit the next, not knit the next stitch and turn, but knit two and turn, or maybe it's knit three and turn, but let's pretend it's knit two and turn. So you just knit two, it's purl, and then knit. There you go, you knit two, and then you turn and then you do your German short row. Pass the stitch, make sure the yarn is in the front, bring it over to the back side and pull, pull, pull to create a funny stitch and continue to work back in pattern. That's how you do it. Then I'll show you what you do when you hit that point where you're not supposed to short row shape anymore. I'm approaching that point where um, the short row shaping is supposed to stop. So you can see that German short row stitch there. It's that funny one. So let me just work up to it. Okay, and you always knit through both legs of that short row. And then, because I hit that stitch marker that says, whoa, you're done short row shaping. What I do is I just, I'm gonna get rid of that guy. You just knit in pattern to the end of the row like that. And then you turn your work and you knit all the way across, um, all the way to the end of that row. But I'll just show you when I, I get near the end. Getting uh, close to that end point and as I'm going you can see I'm getting rid of the short row shaping markers because I don't need them anymore. Okay I am knitting up to that last short row shaping before the stitch marker that tells me this is the end. So knitting in pattern. That's a purl. So I knit through my last German short row. Whoops. Whoopsie. Okay. And every now and then you have this day where, there we go. <laughs> I was catching part of the yarn. Okay, that's the last one. Pull that out, knit to the end. And you will see what that looks like. Interesting, hey? What you have done is added extra material for uh, very often this is for the cap of a of a set in sleeve or sometimes it is for adding some extra ease in terms of around the bust for example and they'll get you to do short row shaping or sometimes I've done certain collars where I need to add short row shaping to create the effect of the collar that I want but 
that is not difficult. You just have to make sure you're not interrupted when doing it. That's how you do the German short row shaping.